Because um, I wanted to briefly talk about something that happened uh, yesterday. We had a, a, a new believer who had some questions about Halloween. All right, and we know Halloween was last night. I think it was. <laughs> Days are running together when you're just laid out in bed. But um, um, the uh, he had some questions about Halloween and what should be the Christian response to Halloween. I didn't want to give him my opinion. I didn't want to give him the official stance of the church. I said, I, I, I really don't want to do those things. I just want to turn to Scripture and tell you what the Scripture has to say about Halloween. So uh, it's very high level. I just took about five minutes. I just happened to have this fantastic, incredible King James Bible with me when the individual asked the question. So I said, well, Let's turn to the Bible and see what God's Word has to say about Halloween. So I just wanted to share some things with you briefly, and then we'll get into 1 Peter 2. Um, one thing about uh, Halloween, um, well, it's, it's, it's a holiday, but um, what does the Bible have to say about holidays? Well, I want you to turn to Romans, the 14th chapter, really quickly. And like I said, we'll make this brief because this isn't a part of our normal study. Uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans. Gone to 1 Corinthians, gone too far to your right. Romans uh, 14 and 5. Romans 14 and 5. Romans 14 and 5 says, God's word says, One man esteemeth one day above another, one esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Y'all see that? Okay, and what I told this, this new believer, I said, you know, I said, I have born again believer friends who they really don't celebrate Christmas. But the scripture says that one man esteemeth one day above another. So if they want to celebrate it, fine. If they don't, the Lord, the, the God's word gives us that liberty to decide what days we want to esteem greater than another. Does that make sense? And so when it comes to holidays, the Lord gives us that liberty when it comes to holidays. And as a matter of fact, if we continue to turn from Romans going to the right, you got Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians. I want us to turn to the book of Colossians. You got Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. If you wind up in your T-books, you've gone too far to your right. Colossians 2 and 16. Colossians 2 and 16. God's word says... Uh, let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of any what? Holy day. That's where we get our word holiday from. That's the modern day word holy day or of uh, the new moon or of the Sabbath days. Okay? If you want to take a day of rest, that's fine, but there's, there's no requirement that you honor the Sabbath day, at least as a New Testament Christian. That's not a requirement as it was in the, in the Old Testament. But it says, let no man judge you in these things. If, if you want to treat this day as a, as a holiday, you can. If you don't, you don't have to. All right? So where are we going with this? Well, um, when you look at holidays, you, there are many of the holidays that Christians celebrate today that actually have secular and pagan roots. Okay, if you look at Christmas, for instance, most biblical scholars would tell you that Jesus wasn't born on December 25th, but we use that as a day to celebrate Jesus' birth. Same thing with Easter. The, the Easter rabbit has nothing to do with the resurrection of Jesus, but we use that time of year to, to honor and celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, one other holiday that has secular roots, uh, Valentine's Day. Okay? It, it really has secular roots, but Christians have adopted Valentine's Day as a symbol of love. We know that God is love. Uh, Jesus touched the hearts of men. And so uh, there are many churches, uh, including this one in times past, where we've had uh, Valentine's Day banquets for our married couples so that, you know, we want to emphasize one of the institutions of uh, the first institution that God established, which was marriage. And so we use Valentine's Day as an opportunity to embrace those Christian values. So there are a lot of holidays which have secular and pagan roots, but the church has adopted it to promote Christian values. All right? Now, Halloween is the only holiday that has secular and pagan roots or origins, 
but it doesn't celebrate um, Christian values. It, cel- it continues to celebrate pagan values. And this is what I was explaining to the believer. Uh, Halloween celebrates things such as death and darkness. It doesn't celebrate Christian love. It doesn't celebrate the birth of Christ. It doesn't celebrate the resurrection of Christ. Does that make sense? Okay. It celebrates death and darkness. So the question becomes, how should Christians react to the celebration of death and darkness? What does the scripture have to say about that? Well, you know, the world famous scripture, uh, Romans 6.23 says, for the wages of what? Sin. Sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Well, we see right here that where did why does mankind have to deal with with death? Mankind has to deal with death because of sin. Because death is the wages of sin. It's something that we've earned as a result of sin. Going all the way back to the Garden of Eden, God told Adam, the day that you eat of this fruit, you shall surely what? Die. Right, and so why? And, and then there's another passage of scripture I believe is in Romans five that says that uh, that death. Well, let me see if I can find it here real quick because I don't want to spend a lot of time on this because I know we have another study to do. But um, uh, it was like death reigned from Adam to Moses. Oh yeah, yeah. Romans five twelve. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. Romans. Romans 5.12 says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death, how did death get here? By sin. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. You see that? And so uh, we see right here that um, death is not something that the Lord really celebrates <laughs> or that the word of God celebrates why because this is, it, it deals death only came about because of the result of sin we serve a holy God and God is not going to be in the presence of sin okay so, uh, so Halloween celebrates death so we can talk about death Halloween also celebrates darkness okay what does the Bible have to say about darkness well Matthew Mark Luke John John the third chapter John the third chapter in the 19th verse says and this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil most people do their I won't say bad stuff at night yeah a lot of bad stuff happens at night right You know, a lot of bad stuff happens at night. And when people go trick-or-treating, they generally don't go out at 3.30 in the afternoon, although I have seen that. But (laughs) generally, they wait for it to get dark, and then they go out to do their their trick-or-treating. All right? The thing about it, just don't dig into it so much. Enjoy the kids. Don't think about all the stuff it could be. Have fun with it. Don't... You know, that's the way you grow up. Kids grow up thinking, well, I'm going to get me a bunch of candy. I'm not going to go out thinking about right. whether witches are real or not. And you know... Right. And, and, and this is why I started back with the Romans 14.5. It says, One man is timeth a day above another. Another is timeth every day of light. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. I like that. Let, let, I let, like seeing the kids laugh and dress up and wear costumes and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, we, we would let every man be fully persuaded in his, in his own mind. And so when I was, I was sharing this information, and, and there's some other Bible verses that deal with darkness. I, I, I won't bore you with them, but the, very, the, the fourth verse from the very beginning of the book, Genesis 1-4, it talks about how God separated light from darkness, right? Because light and darkness can't coexist. And then in um, its... Uh, 1 John 1 5 it says uh, then this is the message that we have heard and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness. There's no darkness. And if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness we lie and do not the truth. Alright? And so the, the Bible, or rather God's word here speaks against death. It speaks against darkness. Now you say, well because of that does that mean that it's bad uh, for me to have a pumpkin on my porch, let every man be fully persuaded. You know, by his own mind. Is it okay for my kids to eat candy during this time of year? Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. And so that's the answer that I gave the the new believer because they were 
uh, struggling uh, with this issue of Halloween. I said, well, you know, this is this is what the Bible has to say about that particular holiday. Now, um, how you approach it from there, you're going to have to to pray about it and be you know be fully persuaded, but with your own mind in terms of how you want to to go forward with that.